taking into consideration a specific opponent, Mark, I know you do some work with the guys at San Antonio, and I won't talk about him this year, but last year, a large percentage of their crosses had been scored from, from low crosses, flashed across the face of goal. So we're scoring a lot of goals that way. And I'll show you a couple of examples here. They're in white. Um, they had very fast wingers who were usually faster than the fullbacks of the opposition. So they were to beat players down the outside. On this occasion, I think it's a cutback. Okay, a little bit of magic in the box and then able to finish. But they were they were getting, you know, close to the, the byline, getting crosses across like this that led to simple tappings. And they almost scored against us. This last clip you're about to see, this is actually against us. We played them earlier in the season um, and somehow they managed to miss from that situation. So I always think it's quite powerful when you can show teams, look, they nearly hurt us through this. We really need to be switched on when we're working on it. Um, so we know they want to score with low crosses. We know that's a weapon for them. Um, but we want to mark in a box, right? That's one of our principles. So how do we react to our fullback being beaten by a faster winger who's going to flash across across the face of goal? Uh, so here, what you're going to see in the exercise, we just tweak one of our staple exercises, is there's going to be a winger on the right-hand side of the screen. I'm going to feed him. Two defenders are sprinting back, and then there's one centre forward in between them who's just trying to get there and tap the ball in. So we still want to mark in the box, um, but it's a bit of a race and we just want to work on those clearances from a, a hard ball that's fizzed across the face of goal. <clears throat> so this is just how we will adjust for playing against San Antonio from last year. And then after the game, I always think it's important to reinforce belief in your methods so that the players buy in to you as a coach and your ideas, right? Because professional players are always looking for opportunities to believe in you. And I think you've got to take those opportunities to build credibility and belief in yourself. Um, so, so after the fact, I mean, you know that, Mark, right, from, from your time in the pro game. Um, so after the fact, if, if things have worked and they don't always work, right, but we can show players clips and we can say, look, we knew that their low crosses were going to be a danger. This is what we did in training, guys. This is how you did in the game. Brilliant. Um, and then the next time you say, look, guys, we have a new exercise that we're going to use to counteract something you know, the players are maybe even more in tune to it because they've seen that the proof is in the pudding um, and it's, it's helped them win a game, you know.